let's take a look at Euler paths and Euler circuits. First, let's look at what a path is and what a circuit is in general. So whenever you have a path, it is simply a list of vertices that directs you from one vertex to another using edges. So for example, I can create a path from vertex A to vertex F by going in the following manner. I can travel from A to D to H to E to F. And that would be one such path. Again, A to D to H to E to F. That, however, is not a unique path. I could come up with another path from A to F that looks like this. I could, could travel from A to D down to G. Then I could go to H. I could go to E. Then I could travel to B. And then I could travel to F. But the whole point of a path is that you start at one vertex and end at another. But again, the path is not unique. A circuit is very similar, except it is a list of vertices that directs you from a vertex back to the same vertex where you began. So let's say I want to create a circuit um, from, let's say, B. Again, it'll go back to itself. So one such circuit, what I could, I could go from B to F to E, and I could go back to B. That would be one possible circuit. Another circuit from B is I could go from B to E, and then I could take the second edge right back to B where I came from, B to E, back to B. And that is another circuit. Again, those are not unique in any way, shape, or form. I could take another circuit that goes from B to E to H to G to D back to H to E and to B. Again, as long as I end up where I started, that is considered to be a circuit. Now, when we talk about Euler paths and Euler circuits, this is a specific or special kind of path or circuit. So an Euler path is a path from one vertex to another, which is the definition of a path, except an Euler path travels every edge exactly once. So we are not allowed to retrace our steps. Once we've traveled an edge, we are not allowed to travel it again. So if we take a look at graph number one, for example, an Euler path might look like the following. I can travel from A to B. Then I could travel from B to C. Then I might decide to go back to B and then back to A. Then I would have to travel to E and I could travel to D, to C, and I can finish back at E. Again, that is not a unique Euler path. There certainly would be others, but notice as I traveled the edges, I traced over every edge exactly one time. Looking at graph number two, we can create an Euler path there as well. If I begin at W, I can travel from W to Y. Then I can take the loop, which leads me right back to vertex Y. Then I could go over to Z. And I need to take the loop because if I go to X now, notice I can't get back to Z without retracing my steps. So I'll take my loop, end up back at Z, and then I'll travel on to vertex X. I would encourage you at this point to pause the video and see if you can find an Euler path for graph three before you watch me guide you through it. All right, so looking at graph number three, um, I will decide to start at vertex O down at the bottom. From O, I'm going to make the choice to travel to L 
which then leads me to N, which will lead me to vertex M. From there, I'll choose to go to K, then I'll go back to O, which will lead me to L, which leads me to M. Again, not a unique Euler path, but as long as you can follow your list of vertices and end up um, at a different vertex from where you started, and every edge has been traveled exactly one time, you have found an Euler path. Now, an Euler circuit is very similar in that you travel every edge exactly once. But if you'll recall, a circuit means you begin and end at the same vertex. So it's the same idea as an Euler path, but we must start and finish at the same spot. So for example, if we take our graph number four here, and let's start at vertex D just for fun. If I start at D, I can travel to C, then I could travel to B, then on to A, and go back to D. And now I do have to continue. I'll, I'm back to where I started, but notice I have not traveled all the edges. So from D, I might decide to go to A, and then go back to B, and then to C, and then to D. And that has completed my Euler circuit because now I have traveled every edge exactly one time. Looking at graph number five and tracing what's going to happen here, um, one of the things that I can do, again, pick a starting point. Um, I'm going to pick V up there at the top. So let's start at vertex V and then I could travel either to X or W. I'll choose to travel to W. Then I have to go to X. I don't have a choice. At this point, I do have a choice. Um, the only thing I can't do is go back to V because if I go back to V using this edge, notice I'm stuck. I can't get to any of these other three edges without retracing my steps, and that is not allowed. So from X, I'll decide to travel to Y, then to Z, then back to X, and last but not least, back to V. That doesn't look like a V, does it? There we go, back to V. And again, notice I began with a V, and I ended with a V. That makes that a circuit. All right, as with the last one, I would encourage you to pause the video and see for graph six if you can come up with an Euler circuit on your own. For graph six, again, I'm going to pick a starting point. I'm going to use I. It looks like a nice friendly starting point over there. Um, from I, I'm going to choose to travel to H. From H, I'm gonna to go to M. And again, I could go back to I, but I want to end at I, and there's only one road back into I, so I don't want to travel that road yet from M to I, so I'm going to just keep on moving. I'm going to head down to vertex J. Then I'm going to decide to go to K. Then I'm going to go up to H and back down to K. Then I'll head over to L. And at this point, again, I don't want to go up to M because then that will force me to go to I. And there are two edges down there from L to J I have not yet traveled. So I'll go from L to J, then back to L, then I'll go up to M. And then last but not least, I will end at I. And again, every edge has been traveled exactly once. All right, in this um, slide, I am going to, again, encourage you to pause the video. And with each one of those graphs, I would like you to determine if there is an Euler path, an Euler circuit, or neither one. All right, hopefully you took the time to pause the video and welcome back if that is the case. So for graph number one, let's see what happens. If we start at vertex A, for example, and then travel to D, and then to C, and then to B, um, I find I get stuck. I can go on to A, but then I haven't traveled all the edges. If I go to D, I'm stuck as well. So that way may not work. 
what if we start going from A maybe down to C? So if I do that, then I have to go to B or D. And again, I can't go back to A, I could go to B. And then again, I'm kind of stuck. If I go to C, I can't get out because every edge has been traveled. If I go back to A, I'm right back to where I started, but I haven't traveled all of the edges. And so I think we will decide that this one is neither. This one is impossible to travel every edge exactly once. With graph number two, if we start at vertex D, I can travel from D to E to A, back to D, then I can move on to C, and then I can travel to A, then I can travel to B, and I can go back to C. Since I started at vertex D and ended at vertex C, this graph has an Euler path. Looking at graph number three, I'm going to start at vertex A. I can travel to E. Then from E, the only thing I don't want to do is go back to A, so I'm going to travel to D. I'm going to take the loop around D. So again, record that twice in a row. Then I have no choice but to go to B. Then I have no choice but to go to C. Now I could go to E, but notice I have no way to get back to C to take those other two edges from B to C, so I'm gonna take them now. From C, I'm gonna go back to B, then I'm gonna to go to C again, then we'll travel to E, and last but not least, we'll end up at A. And so this is an Euler path, or sorry, an Euler circuit, I misspoke, because I began and ended at the same vertex, in this case, vertex A. And then last but not least, looking at graph number four, um, I think it's fairly plain to see if this is going to work out, you're gonna to have to start at A and then end at B or vice versa, start at B and end at A um, because there's no other way to get in or out. So if I start at A and go to C and then go to E, I can go over to F and then the only way to get to B is just to continue up the way, but I missed an edge from E to F um, if I decide to go to E and then I backtrack back to E, well, same thing. I can't get to the edge from F to D or B to D because I've already been there. And so I think this one is also an impossibility. I cannot travel every edge exactly once. So you might be thinking at this point, well, is there a method to the madness or do I just have to guess every time? And there absolutely positively is a method to the madness, and it has to do with the degrees um, of the vertices in your graph. So I'm going to real quick take a peek here. Notice in graph number one, if I'm to list the degree, every one of those um, vertices has degree three. I'm going to now go to graph four because that was the uh, one that also did not have an Euler path nor an Euler circuit. Notice my degrees are 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, and 1. I'm now going to go to graph number 2. I'm going to list the degrees there as well. So A has degree 4, B has degree 2, C has 3, D has 3, E has 2. And then going back to graph number 3, Again, just going to list the degrees of the vertices. A had degree 2, E had degree 4, D had degree 4, C had degree 4, and B had degree 4. The key to this, if you have not yet picked up on it or found a pattern, is notice in the graphs that had neither an Euler path nor an Euler circuit, every vertex well, not every vertex, but we have multiple vertices, four or more, that have odd degree. Notice when there was an Euler path, we did have some vertices with odd degree, but there were exactly two. D 
and C in this case. And if you rewind the video and go back and look at the Euler paths in that earlier, um, in the earlier screen, you will notice as well that there were two vertices exactly that had odd degree. When it comes to the Euler circuit, notice that every single vertex has even degree. And so we can sum that up in terms of how we find Euler paths or Euler circuits in the following manner. A graph has an Euler path when there are exactly two vertices with odd degree. And in addition to that, we can say something even better. The Euler path will begin at one vertex that is odd, and it will end at the other vertex that has odd degree. If a graph is going to have an Euler circuit, then every single vertex must be an even vertex. Again, remembering an even vertex means there is even degree. For an Euler circuit, you may begin and end at any vertex of your choosing. Since they are all even, it does not matter where you start and finish. So hopefully that will help you be able to look at a graph and fairly quickly identify whether there is an Euler path, an Euler circuit, or neither. And when there is an Euler path or an Euler circuit, it also should help you decide where you should begin um, counting those vertices off and making a list of vertices to find the path or the circuit.